Hi everyone, Peter here from Movement and Performance and in this presentation we're going to be talking about the mechanisms of muscle hypertrophy. So what is it that actually stimulates muscle growth? So first we need to understand what muscle hypertrophy is. So essentially we're talking about an increase in the size of a muscle um, and in this case we're going to be talking about skeletal muscle. Um, and essentially we can have two theorized um, forms of hypertrophy and potentially three which we'll talk about. So if this is an original muscle fiber, this big circle is the um, the muscle fiber and these uh, little orange circles in the middle are the myofibrils. So they're the smallest components of the uh, muscle fiber and they're what actually cr create um, contraction. So they actually, um, they're the contractile units of the muscle fiber. So from, tr from some sort of resistance training, we can have myofi myofibrillar hypertrophy, which is essentially um, these myofibrils, we basically get an increased number of them, which expands the total um, size of the muscle fiber. And then we get that over all the muscle fibers, and again, eventually we get an increase in the size of the muscle belly. And then we have this theorized sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, which is essentially an increase in the um, this sort of area surrounding the, so the cell of the muscle fiber, but not the um, actual contractile unit. So essentially we got the same amount of contractile units, but we have an increase in the, uh, the other organelles surrounding um, the myofibrils. And this is, again, not set in stone. This is more of a theorized um, uh, sort of phenomenon. Um, and it's sort of probably arisen from the differences in we see strength athletes who appear to have a more uh, denser looking physique compared to bodybuilders who have a more um, almost bubbly looking physique. And also the fact that we can have weightlifters and powerlifters who are much, much, much stronger per pound of body weight than uh, bodybuilders. Nonetheless, we're going to sort of delve into now the mechanisms of how we actually um, stimulate this muscle growth. So there's three proposed mechanisms which have uh, been proposed by Brad Schoenfeld um, in this book, Science and Development of Muscle Hypertrophy. He also has um, a few uh, research articles about this. But essentially, this is a really good resource. So if you want to check this book out, um, highly recommended. So essentially, the three mechanisms are mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage. And it's pretty much very well established that mechanical tension is by far the primary driving force of muscle hypertrophy. And these two mechanisms are um, uh, not well understood at best, but it's still not exactly 100% understood if, this is, if these actually do contribute to muscle hypertrophy. But they are theorized, and we'll get into that. So we're going to start off talking about mechanical tension, the most important mechanism. So essentially mechanical tension uh, refers to basically the total work done under tension by the muscle. Um, and it's pretty much essentially when we get to sort of the practical meaning of it, it's basically training volume. So we want to basically progress training volume over a training period in order to drive hypertrophy because that's going to increase the mechanical tension that's going to be um, sensed by the muscle and then we're going to cause muscle hypertrophy. So something to note here with in terms of sort of progressing training volume uh, is tempo and is tempo even important? So there's a video on this channel, uh, the effects of repetition tempo on hypertrophy, but essentially to cover this really briefly, it doesn't actually matter too much on, with hypertrophy as long as training volume is going up and as long as we're actually making sure we're still controlling the um, both concentric and eccentric uh, portions of the lift so that the muscle is actually under tension. If, the, if we're just sort of being slack and letting gravity do the work on the eccentric part of the uh, lift, then we're not actually, um, we don't actually have as much tension on the muscle. So we've got to make sure that when we're increasing volume, we're still making sure we're still our muscles are still doing uh, are still doing the work under tension. Um, and if if you want to do variation with slower tempo, 
then ensure that when we when you increase training volume, you still maintain that tempo so that we're still getting more total uh, work done um, throughout the training period. So moving on from mechanical tension, we're going to talk about metabolic stress, which is again another proposed mechanism of muscle hypertrophy, and this is um, essentially referring to the accumulation of byproducts from resistance training, and particularly we get a higher accumulation of byproducts from higher repetition sets. So sets, if we're if we're lasting greater than 30 seconds, so maybe 10 reps plus, 10, up to 20 reps, is probably going to be uh, where we start accumulating byproducts. So I've got this basically. This is a, a narrative review um, from these researchers in a recent published study, and essentially this summarizes the basically potential mechanisms of how metabolic stress may um, promote hypertrophy. And so essentially, if we have resistance training where we get metabolites produced from the exercise, we basically probably going to fatigue those low threshold motor units that so if we're doing higher repetition sets we're not going to be able to use a very heavy load so after um, those metabolites have been produced and the and the low threshold motor units have been fatigued we then have to rely on the higher threshold motor units to actually be activated in order to continue the set and so that's where we potentially get a greater mechanical stimulus um, from a greater number from a greater range of muscle fibers and then we get the hypertrophy adaptations from that so it may not actually be the metabolites themselves that um, that produce the hypertrophy or cause the hypertrophy but it may be that the metabolites indirectly um, promote a greater mechanical tension like we talked about in this previous slide here so it's still not fully well understood but that's probably the most likely um, the most likely role of metabolic stress for hypertrophy at this current stage. Lastly, and probably the least um, convincing sort of mechanism of muscle hypertrophy is muscle damage. So the theory is, and it's quite a logical theory, so I guess it's um, it's understandable, is that when we do resistance training, we get muscle damage, which is um, which has been well established. We do get uh, damage of muscle fibers and however it's uns we're unsure whether that damage actually causes muscle hypertrophy so after we sort of have damage to the muscle fibers um, and then we get a subsequent repair of those muscle fibers back to normal and it's theorized that we those muscle fibers um, grow to a greater extent than they were before in order to um, essentially it's like a safety mechanism so that doesn't happen again um, so that it repairs bigger and stronger however that's hasn't really been um, well established however it is well established that we do get muscle damage so muscle damage it could be um, a causing factor of hy hypertrophy but more likely it's just a basically byproduct of hypertrophy type training however one mechanism that does have some evidence is cell swelling so essentially, if we have the cell um, from a muscle, um, when we get muscle damage, we get a, an accumulation of fluid um, from that, basically, that inflammation. So when that cell swells, it basically, um, this is a theory that it pushes onto the, um, the cytoskeleton. And then as that expands, the sort of cell exterior sees it as a threat. And grows subsequently from that um, swollen cell expanding. And that's it for this presentation, guys. Hopefully, you got something out of it. The take home message here is that um, stick to the basics and stick to the mechanical tension and progressive volume over time. That's going to probably, at this point in time, um, yield the greatest results. So, you can follow movement and performance on Facebook and on Instagram um, with the details here. And you can subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already to stay up to date with the latest informative videos that are posted. So on Facebook and Instagram, you'll find these research infographics, which are essentially the latest research summarized into these easy to understand pictures so that you can stay up to date with the latest research in sports performance training. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you got something out of it.